and welcome to the show. Now, buying a property at auction can be a thrilling experience, but you've got to know what you're doing. Absolutely, but stay tuned because we've got three tales from the auction house that will hopefully point you in the right direction. Yes, showing you the pitfalls and the benefits of buying your home under the hammer. Well, buying at auction can be a tricky process, and if you're unprepared, you could encounter some problems. Yes. Did today's buyers do their homework, or did they fly by the seat of their pants? Here's what they bought. In Hampshire, Jack is excited by a unique feature. Oh, my gosh. A spiral staircase. This is very swish. I have a long list of jobs in Gloucestershire. There's walls that need to come out, there's doors that need to go in, there's things that need to be expanded. And in Hertfordshire, I'm off to a pretty positive start. First impressions are lots of space. All these properties have been sold at auction and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. One, two, three, and gone. We're heading to the coast for starters and the charming town of South Sea. A popular holiday spot, it offers a picturesque retreat by the seaside. And it's where Jackie is heading to see our first auction lot. Let's hope this one is smooth sailing. Sail away with me, honey. Put my heart in your... I'm on the outskirts of Portsmouth in the seaside town of South Sea, which is well known for its amusement parks, its beaches, and of course, fish and chips. That's lunch sorted. Now, you've also got great transport links to the countryside, to the Isle of Wight, and to Portsmouth city centre, which will get you by train into central London in about an hour and a half, making this area really good. And the property I'm about to see might tick all those boxes because it's here. It's a three-bedroom duplex flat on the third floor and came with an auction guide price of £165,000. I'm excited by this one. Let's take a look. The location may be something to get excited about, but a flat on the top floor with no working lift isn't. And apparently it hasn't been working for quite some time. I wouldn't fancy climbing the stairs with uh, loads of shopping, but also, if you're going to refurbish the flat, taking all the things down that you're going to strip out, but bringing all the goods up, you're going to need to be fit. Right, here we go. OK, so, look, this is quite nice, actually. Um, bigger than I thought. So to my left, you've got a bathroom there, very dated, but a decent size. Get a new one um, put in. You've got your first of your three bedrooms. Not a bad size, actually. Easy to get a double bed in there and some storage, but what I can see is really good double glazing and the central heating. Oh, my gosh! The spiral staircase. This is very swish. Um, so this flat is on the third and fourth floor. We'll have a look up there in a moment. But look at this. <gasps> look at this space. Triple aspect windows. How bright is this space? And it's really big. And I love the sort of architectural design, the curved walls. Plenty of space for dining, seating, entertaining. And then you've got your kitchen area. Again, it's not a bad size. I always like to think, is there anything that I could save? Can we reuse things? Yes, maybe you could paint the cupboards, give it all a clean, um, or rip it all out and get a brand new one in. But always check your boiler as well. But all in all, this isn't a bad start at all. I like it. But I need to get up this spiral staircase. Staircase makes me smile. <laughs> uh, wow, look, this is a substantial landing, a really decent size. I love the arch window, lots of light flooding through. So you've got your bedroom to the right, again, arch windows, really, really decent size. Do you know what? The more I look around this flat, the more I like it. Yeah. Okay, so 
into what must be the master bedroom. But look at the size of this. Um, you have got your double aspect arch windows. There's space there for clever storage, um, which would be good. You have got an ensuite. Um, it's a little bit tired, a little bit dated. I would get that ripped out and make it really modern. The only thing I'm thinking of is the bedroom over there doesn't have its own ensuite. But could you create a doorway here, making this a Jack and Jill bathroom, turn that into more of a shower, toilet and sink, just reconfigure it a bit, then both bedrooms will have access. That, I think, is food for thought. It's gotta be two ways Or it's never gonna, never gonna, never gonna There is a lot to like about this flat. It's a leasehold property that has 125 years remaining on the lease, so more good news. And if that wasn't enough, there's a bonus outside. Now, I thought I'd show you this, because although the flat doesn't come with a balcony or communal gardens, what it does come with is a garage. I know it may not seem like a lot, but you know what? It is possibly a great money spinner. Even if you didn't have a car, you could rent this space, or you could use it as storage. Either way, that is a bonus. Jackie's looked under the hood of this lot, and it has ticked all the right boxes. So will a local estate agent be impressed too? We invited one along to get their thoughts and valuations on this three-bed flat guided at 165,000. One of the biggest positives so I see with this property is that it's going to be the natural light. You know, your top floor, you've got a lovely aspect, you're looking out towards the sea, um, and it's big as well, it's split level. You've got a spiral staircase, everyone loves a spiral staircase. Those are the really nice features about the home. What about those all-important figures? Are they attractive too? So, with a minor refurb and a bit of a tidy up, we could certainly be looking at a figure, resale figure, of around £200,000. Um, as a traditional residential let, we could certainly be looking at £1,300 per calendar month. Well, whoever manages to secure this duplex for the right price, of course, I think they're onto a winner. It's a great flat in a great location, and there doesn't seem to be that much work that needs doing here. Let's find out who fancied this bright duplex when it went under the hammer. This lot was sold at a remote property auction with bids taking place online. The third and final time, all done. Sold to the internet. Full bang on the guide price of 165,000, it was bought by business partners Tim and Sasha. They're experienced developers who live locally, and they're looking forward to working on a project close to home. Sasha, Tim, lovely to meet you both. Lovely yeah, to meet you great too. to meet you too. I love this duplex flat. I really, really do. Um, and what about you? What are your feelings towards it, and why did you buy it? Yeah, well, I think it was comes down to the price, really. It was a really good price. We know the area really well, um, and we've got a good sort of vision for what we want to do. And, and have, is this your first property in this area? Together, this is actually our first um, business opportunity that we've taken up for the South Sea area. Um, prior to that, um, we actually have um, property uh, HMOs up in North Wales and also in Southampton. Uh, so this is our first foray actually somewhere local. So how long have you worked together then? I think we've been working together for two years, met about three years ago on a property networking event. Oh. So we've got to know each other a bit more. We've got a shared history of being in the military previously. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do or what did you do, Sasha? Uh, so I was full-time uh, working for the Royal Navy um, up in the Ministry of Defence in my last job and I decided that I wanted to become a property investor. Wow. And, then, and what about you, Tim? So what's your background in the Yeah, marriage? so I served about six and a half years in the RAF, so I left about six years ago, straight from that to being a full-time property investor. We find that we work quite well. We kind of have sort of, like, shared values, but also our skill sets complement each other. Yeah. And um, so what is the plan for, for, this, for this place? So we're intending to um, do quite a light refurbishment, 
but by that we mean we'll, we'll replace the kitchen because right. uh, that yeah. is really quite dated and probably original to when the flat was actually built. Yeah. Um, in terms of the bathrooms, we see sort of like a, a, a light refurb. We're going to do the grouting and make them fresh the bathroom, maybe replace panels or, or revisit what we're doing with the, the showers, etc. Um, and then just redecorate throughout. When you are stripping out the kitchen, the bathroom or anything else, and then you have to bring in all of the goods up, there's no lift. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we have. So before we bought the property, I already knew the lift wasn't working. It's never been working. So that was uh, something we knew about. So of course, stripping out the kitchen now or bringing a new kitchen, it's just a bit of extra manpower, really. So not you doing the work? I, I might well. do. Yes, I, oh, right. I don't mind getting my hands dirty for the strip out phase, really, and that. But otherwise, I leave it to the professionals most of the time. And so what is the plan? So we're intending to do a uh, service accommodation, which is like, uh, you know, holiday lets. We're thinking about letting it as like one unit, yeah. um, and then potentially you could get like up to eight people if yeah. you have two per bedroom and then two in the sitting room. Uh, so we think we could get quite a number of people, and then that opens it up really to um, people visiting the city, maybe travelling through the city. Yeah, because it's really good. I mean, it's a great location. I mean, you've got everything on your doorstep, and as you say, the great transport links. Yeah. Are you going to have a sort of seaside theme at all or nothing like that? Something that's going to market really well, that's going to look good for pictures. Um, yeah. We're going to engage an interior designer to assist us to get that high-end finish. What about your budget? How much have you put aside for this? We're allowing up to sort of £15,000 for the refurb. Yeah. Um, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Mm. That includes a place in the kitchen. So I think that's our sort of ballpark figure now. So I'm uh, smiling because yeah, I, I, I was I saying... Yeah, I noticed that. Well, <laughs> so that's what we're thinking, hold on so a second, 15? So the realistic in my mind is yeah. 15 to 20. 15 to 20 mm -hmm. thousand pounds. Time scale? I think we're probably looking three to four months yeah. maximum. I am excited for this, for this property. I really am. I really am. And I wish you the very, very best of luck. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, with their military no-nonsense background, I think this flat has fallen into safe hands with Sasha and Tim. They know exactly what they want to do here. They're ready to go. But will it be plain sailing, or will they come across a bit of turbulence? You can find out how it all pans out later in the show. I'm heading to Gloucestershire now in the spa town of Cheltenham. It's famous for its Regency architecture and its famous race course. It's also the birthplace of the 20th century composer, Gustav Holst. But will I be giving the property I'm in town to see a standing ovation? Well, just half a mile from the train station and the centre of what is regularly voted one of the most attractive and desirable places to live in the UK is the property I'm here to see. This is it. It's a three-bed mid-terrace with the tantalisingly attractive guy price of £160,000 plus. I mean, this really is a beautiful spa town. And so anything here has got to command some kind of a premium. It's tired and dated, which I think is great news because it, it does mean that we're probably going to be able to add value, which is what we're always after. But front living room there, um, you could definitely make a, a nice feature fireplace out of that. As you enter further into the property, uh, your mind starts to race in terms of what you might be able to do with this. We've obviously got the stairs, we've got a half landing there with the bathroom on it, um, and then a rear sitting room here. I mean, I love the panelling. Uh, that is really quite pleasant. But straight away, um, glancing through the window, something strange going on out there. And so I'm already trying to formulate a plan of how we are going to change this around, because I don't think it's working, but I think there's some great opportunity. <laughs> Because come down these steps and we're into the kitchen area now. Look at this. It just doesn't work at all, does it? It's absolutely tiny. It feels very, very claustrophobic. Uh, obviously, we've got polystyrene ceiling tiles, which would have to go. But, I mean, the whole thing is going to be completely renovated anyway. The, the continuing opportunity is you've got this room here. Now, 
my guess is this is an extension which is put onto the rear of the property. It does create a semi, what's the word, real room. It's a, almost a proper room. But I think you could do so much more uh, because there's space out the back there, and we'll explore that in a minute. Uh, but there's walls that need to come out, there's doors that need to go in, there's things that need to be expanded. But that's just terrific because we could potentially add so much value to this house. Wow, let's go out the back. From out here, you can sort of get more of an idea of what I mean about that sort of semi-not-quite-proper thing that's there. What we can see here also is that on either side, the neighbours have got a single-storey extension, so the obvious thing to do to take things to the next level is to continue that extension out. Create that, turn that into something proper, and uh, Bob's your jolly old uncle. You've got um, those walls coming out, you've got the walls in the middle coming out, you've got this amazing house, potentially! And <laughs> calm down, an extension could make this house more desirable, but it's a good idea for any buyer to check the ceiling price for similar properties in the area to ensure the cost of the extension doesn't exceed the value it would add to the property. But there's definitely fantastic potential downstairs, and there's still plenty to see. So upstairs onto this little half landing, and apart from the front living room, uh, this is about the only room that I wouldn't mess around with too much, yeah. apart from the fact you're going to change and everything. Uh, so I suppose that is messing around. The position of it is perfect there. I think it works very well. Continuing upstairs, the ceiling height is uh, a bit strange, but my... Wow. Uh, my thoughts are, take that all away. Reveal the joists and reveal the underside of the roof. You'd have to insulate it properly, but it will just give this upstairs a really nice open feel. Uh, similarly with these bedrooms, you've got one at the back there, and then it's a three-bedroom property. But what they don't necessarily point out is that to get to the third bedroom, you have to come into the second bedroom, and then it's just basically got this dividing wall. Now, again, that's not ideal. Can't necessarily see a way of getting in here without coming through here apart from maybe putting a little corridor in there which you could but the main thing here again is just open up the ceilings and then what feels like a very cramped space would suddenly be a lot more user friendly yeah the thought of how you can transform this property is really really exciting <laughs> While a bedroom doesn't legally need independent access in the UK, the current layout still isn't the most convenient and could put off buyers. But what will an estate agent make of this layout? We've asked one along to get her thoughts and valuations. I think that the desirability of a property like this would be two double bedrooms upstairs with an upstairs family bathroom and then downstairs having the two reception rooms and an open plan, potentially extended kitchen, living, diner area, which is something that we're finding that the public are very much kind of wanting within their search these days. Once the renovation is complete, what sort of figures does the agent think this property could achieve on the sales market? I'd be anticipating a resale price in the region of £275,000 to £280,000. And on the rental market? Once renovated, I'd be anticipating this property would be achieving anywhere in the region of £950 to £1,000 per calendar month. Well, Cheltenham is gorgeous and the house could be amazing. What not to love? Let's see who bought it when it went under the hammer. This lot was part of a remote auction with bids taking place online. One, two, three, and gone. The successful bidders who bought the lot for 184,000 were husband and wife Kirsty and Shane. I caught up with them to find out their plans for the three-bed property. Shane, Kirsty, love to meet you both. Lovely to meet Lovely you too. Lovely to meet you too. Congratulations. I think you've got a great house here. But first of all, tell me why you wanted to buy it. OK, so we were looking for a property in Cheltenham, um, liked the look of the house and then thought it was for us, so that was it, really. So you wanted a place in Cheltenham for what reason? 
So we, prov we provide supported accommodation to young people leaving care. So um, we wanted a really nice house here, something that we can make up and make beautiful for them. So tell me more about what you do exactly. Okay, so some of our young people come from foster care placements, children's residential, basically broken family homes. So we provide support and the accommodation to make sure that we're supporting them to develop by the time they're 18 into a state where they can be independent. Wow, what a fantastic thing. How many projects like this have you actually got? We've currently got three other projects on the go as we're speaking right now. Um, and we've also got a portfolio of 38 rental properties. 38? Yeah. Some of them across the board are obviously just normal rental properties and others are obviously in the homes. We've got 15 within our supported service. Wow. So. As well as the property arm of the business, Kirsty also runs a care company which provides young people with the support they need to make the transition to living independently, with placements funded by the local authority. This allows her to find properties that fit the requirements of the young people in her care. Shane also has his own building company and will be putting his experience to use here. He plans to bring in his team to complete the extensive list of works. Tell me what you're going to do to it then. So we're going to, you know, make it more homely, um, take away these old 1960s tiled fire surrounds, sort out some of the floors because the levels are a bit odd, the ceilings, you know, so we'll just be doing the whole shebang really. What about more major work? Because I just feel there's so much that you could do to this place, particularly not in this room, but the rest of the house, especially down the kitchen area. Yeah, Tell exactly me what that. your thoughts are for that. So we want to make a really big kitchen. That's the area the young people love as well. So we would teach them to cook. So we need it to be really big and open. So we're going to take that wall down, build out so the kitchen comes across and looks over the garden, which would be lovely. Kirsty and Shane don't plan on extending the property as the current size works for their intended use. But with a long list of jobs to do, what sort of budget have they set aside for this project? I'm reckoning we're probably going to come in around about 18 to 23,000. Mm -hmm. And what about a time scale? Um, Three months. Yeah, I reckon we're, we're You're just taking cracking it. the whip, are you? Yeah, yeah. And leisurely three months to do, yeah. The kids waiting. <laughs> You've already got people lined up to, to come in, have you? Just yeah. waiting, chomping at the bit. Um, well, there's always a waiting list. Um, right. That makes me sad, actually, because yeah, when there is always a waiting list, that's people without proper homes and stability. So to me, it's to try and avoid that. So the sooner we get all of the properties done, the sooner as I buy them, the better, really. Have you got kids of your own? Yeah, two. Two, how old are they? <laughs> You've got one, haven't you? Um, so, Scarlett, she is 22, right. and my son, he is 14. And I have a Mia, and she's seven. Oh, brilliant. Well, I can't wish you enough good luck. I hope it turns out fantastic, and we can't wait to see how you get on. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank <laughs> you. Well, what a great initiative Kirsty and Shane are involved in. And it just goes to show that properties bought at auction can go to all sorts of uses. How will they get on and how will they transform this place? You can find out later in the show. Coming up in Hertfordshire, I take the bad with the good. The kitchen uh, needs to be completely refurbished, but I really like this design. And in Gloucestershire, it's been a tricky build. We had stone walls, so as soon as you started building them up, they were falling back down again. Back now to Hampshire and the seaside resort of Southsea, where Jackie came across a three-bed duplex flat guided at 165,000. It was on the third floor, and with the lift out of commission, it was a trek to the top. I wouldn't fancy climbing the stairs with uh, loads of shopping, but also, if you're going to refurbish the flat, taking all the things down that you're going to strip out, but bringing all the goods up, you're going to need to be fit. Well, once the workout was done, the flat was great. Big rooms, split level, with a spiral staircase to two of the bedrooms. 
and ex-service personnel turned property developers Sasha and Tim weren't going to be put off by having to put in some effort, so paid £165,000 for their next business venture. So what is the plan? So we're intending to do a service accommodation, which is like, uh, you know, holiday lets. This would be Tim and Sasha's first holiday accommodation project, having previously done houses of multiple occupation. They felt 15 to 20,000 should see the flat kitted out and ship shape in three to four months. Now, seven months on, we're back. Wow, what a transformation. It's looking really stylish and sleek with a pastel palette that enhances the space. We've effectively taken an OK property um, and then we've really upgraded it so that we can uh, you know, pursue a service accommodation or holiday let. Yes, and it's been quite an upgrade, with the downstairs bedroom finished to a boutique hotel standard. And the bathroom looks pretty plush too. And then there's the upstairs. So when we took the, uh, the property um, on, we had this spiral staircase, which was in need of a bit of a refurbishment. We really looked at how we could um, utilize things like the spindles, get it to match the rest of the um, interesting uh, interior decoration with, with regards to the paint colors. So the colors have been echoed in the second bedroom, which has also been squared off to make it a much more practical space. And that's not the only layout change up here. So in this part of the flat, um, we've got the bathroom here that used to be an ensuite. Um, in the here, we've blocked up the old doorway and created a new doorway just here, um, and taken out the bath and made it into a shower room. And that's much better because both bedrooms can now access it and use it. The big master bedroom may no longer be ensuite, but boy, does it look good. And creating a shower room that both bedrooms have easy access to makes a lot of sense. I have to say, it really is looking great, and that was precisely what they were aiming for. So our strategy really was to have a high-end product, and uh, so we engaged the services of uh, an interior designer, so ensuring that it was like um, interesting decor, uh, a lot of amenities, um, a really nice layout that was um, useful for our um, new guests so that uh, we could ensure they got the best experience possible. Dress for success indeed, but there was a lot of work to be done before the finessing stages could begin, and that was predominantly carried out by tradespeople. So if the builders were doing a lot of the practical work and an interior designer was sorting out the look and finish, what did Tim and Sasha do? Uh, my strengths are primarily marketing, strategy, um, ensuring the oversight of the um, interior design and guiding that, um, and then Tim very much is probably more the project management side of things. Yeah, so I tend to source the properties that we buy. I then tend to have a much more hands-on approach with the project management um, and then the physical sort of side of changing the property around through to sort of decorating, getting the tradespeople in and making sure everything like that is done. So a well-coordinated team effort by ex-RAF man Tim and ex-Royal Navy woman Sasha. But what about the potential obstacle of no working lift and three flights of stairs? I look at it, uh, turn the negative into a positive. You get my steps in every day. So there was no, the lift doesn't work at all, never has. Um, everything had to go up and down the stairs. So I filled a couple of skips worth of uh, uh, here on this property with the leftover materials and things. But yes, it was a, a bit of a problem, but yeah, it was easily overcome with a bit of extra labor and manpower. Yes, sometimes you just have to put in the hard yards to get to your end goal, but at what cost? Did they hit their 15 to 20,000 pound target? The refurb did cost more than we first envisaged from both our points of view. We have gone a little bit more higher end and also there's been a couple of problems that we perhaps didn't envisage, like replacing the floor. So the refurb probably cost us about 25,000 pounds. On top of that though, we've had legal fees, stamp duty, finance costs, perhaps staging the flat. So mm -hmm. with all the costs included, we probably spent just about, just in excess of about 40,000 pounds, or waiting for the final bill to come in. 
£40,000 on top of their £165,000 purchase price does mean the pair are looking at an all-in total of £205,000. So, money well spent? What does the agent that saw it last time think? The changes they've made have been fabulous. You know, they spent the money in the right areas, the kitchens, the bathrooms, the decor. These are the really appealing things that are, that are going to make a big difference on the eye and therefore uh, a better price and a better monthly return. So a potential winner on the holiday let market, but does that make it a winner on the resale market too? So from a sales perspective, I feel a figure of around £225,000 is sensible. OK, so currently just a small £20,000 pre-tax profit on the resale market. The agent also thought a standard rental would bring in £1,400 per calendar month. But what about as a holiday let? So as a holiday let or serviced accommodation, you could more than double your income as opposed to a normal residential letting. So certainly something in excess of £3,000 per calendar month could be achieved. Yeah, that kind of matches the figures that we've looked at. That would be based upon a sort of 70 to 80% occupancy. Yeah, £3,000 as a minimum is what we're looking for. And I say £1,000 a month sort of net profit as a minimum over the year. And hopefully in, in key months be you know, quite a bit more than that. If Sasha and Tim were to obtain the agent's figure of £3,000 per month at the 80% occupancy rate they're hoping for, they could be achieving a yield of 14%. So, with this project now ready to hit the holiday rental market, will this business partnership continue to go from strength to strength? So, the good thing about Tim and I is that, you know, we've been together, uh, working together for about two years now. Um, we certainly, our backgrounds are um, both with the military, and so uh, we have a lot of shared values, I think, and standards. And, uh, and also, I, I think our skill set complements each other. Yeah, I'd agree with that, really. So looking for the next opportunity, really, in the not-too-distant future. I'm in Bishop Stortford, a picturesque gem on the Hertfordshire border, known for its market town charm, interesting historic architecture and proximity to the beautiful River Stort. I love the names of some British towns and cities. I've never been here before. This is Bishop's Stortford. I mean, what a name is that? I've been trying to piece together the origins, and the, there is actually a river called the Stort, which is literally just behind the property. I, I mean, I'll tell you about it in a second before I, once I've finished this completely irrelevant ramble. Um, so it's the River Stort, and presumably Stort Ford was where there was a ford over the river, uh, where people, uh, well, in this case, bishops would. Ford. Uh, well, I don't know, is that the, is that the adjective for crossing a river by Ford? I don't know. Anyway, so bishops in their hats and everything would cross the river um, with the... Oh, whatever. Anyway, I'm here to... <laughs> that's completely irrelevant. I'm here to see a flat, a two-bedroom flat in this building. £160,000... Oh, I apologise. £160,000 was the guy price. Let's have a look. Something that is relevant to the property is the front courtyard I just walked through, which offers residential parking and is gated for extra security. So, first floor flat, so up those stairs. Actually, the communal area is in nice condition, which is a really good thing to see. Flat itself, first thing it hits you is <laughs> the, the collar. It's all this kind of beigey kind of magnolia. Everything is, wow, the carpet, the walls, the doors, yeah, wow. Um, I think you've walked into the middle of a cake. Well, kind of a beige coloured cake. Uh, but first impressions are lots of space. Nice little entrance area here, two bedrooms, one there relatively small, that one there a bit bigger, uh, a double. Toilet at the end there definitely could do with uh, refurbishing. Um, but then, really nice surprise, into this room here, which is your kitchen living room. Now, obviously, the kitchen uh, needs to be completely refurbished, but I really like this design. And you've got this really one big living space, uh, which is beautiful, and it gets better. Because out here, what you've got is a small but really lovely balcony looking out onto the river. How cute is that? 
What a view! The property also has communal garden space right on the riverfront. This is a leasehold flat, and what better spot for me to have a wander and ponder about what that might mean for the buyer of this lot. So this is the aforementioned River Stort, and uh, jolly beautiful it is too. Great location for these flats, just overlooking that. Fantastic, but it's also a great place for a bit of a ramble uh, about leasehold, uh, because more often than not, flats are leasehold, and there's things you definitely need to be aware of when it comes to buying a leasehold property. One, and, and probably most importantly, the length of the lease that's remaining. You want to make sure that it's at least 60, 70, 80 years. It depends what your mortgage provider, if you're getting a mortgage, is uh, going to need. And certainly if the lease is shorter than that, it could uh, cost you a lot to have it extended or just mean that you can't actually get finance. Secondly, what's the maintenance charge? Well, the maintenance charge on this, communal maintenance charge, £1,200 a year. That's not too bad. I mean, you've got beautiful grounds to look after. And finally, the third, third thing you need to consider when it comes to leasehold is the ground rent. In this case, it's just £75 a year, so nothing too much to worry about. But you do need to check the legal pack to make sure that you know the answers to those three primary questions when it comes to buying a leasehold property. Luckily, this property comes with a lengthy 95 years remaining on the lease, meaning the buyer shouldn't have too much to worry about here. But what sort of returns could you be looking at on this two-bed flat, guided at £160,000? We've asked along a local estate agent to find out his thoughts and valuations. The location of where we are today is literally right on the edge of the town centre within walking distance of all amenities, the shops, the schools and the uh, transport links as well. It's a very good street, it's a uh, secure entry gates at the front here, and so it's nice and private and there's ample parking and of course we're backing onto the river store behind us. Looking at what needs to be done here, it needs a full redecoration, uh, new carpets, Bathroom and kitchen need replacing, the uh, heating system here, they look like they need new storage heaters put in here, and also some of the windows may need replacing as well, as it looks like they've blown in the double glazing. The agent believes there is a high demand for flats in the area, as there are currently local developers building more. With this in mind, what sort of returns does he predict on the rental and sales markets? For a rental figure, the way the rental market has moved at the moment, I think you'd be looking around £1,200 per gallon a month, and if the property was put for sale, you'd be looking about £250,000. So is this flat in Bishop Stortford heaven sent? Well, maybe not quite, but it is a really great opportunity, I think. Not too much needs to sort it out, and it is in this lovely block with the parking close to the train station. What's not to love? Let's see who bought it when it went under the hammer. This lot didn't sell when it went to auction, but a deal was struck afterwards. Sold. And the successful offer of 164000 was made by Simon. He's no stranger to property development, and I caught up with him to find out his plans for his new purchase. Simon, great to meet you. And to you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me why you wanted to buy this flat, then. Uh, it was at the auction, and... I suspected that I could do it up and get some good rent for it and get a good return should I sell it. OK. And is this something you do generally? Uh, yeah, I'm a landlord. I've got seven already, plus a holiday let, plus this one. Oh, right, OK. And I've had them for about 20 years. And mostly in this area or what? Uh, Braintree, just down the road, and the holiday lets in Car Cornwall. Oh, nice. So what about Bishop Stortford? Do you know this area? I know that it's a desirable area. Yeah. I know that the rents are higher. And this one comes with a gated community, which yeah. means I'm not going to be dealing with parking problems. No. From people coming in and parking. It seems like a really nice development, actually, isn't mm -hmm. it? What did you think of the flat when you first saw it? That it needs completely gutting. Right. Everything, and then starting afresh. So it needs to look like a brand new flat now when it's finished. I was quite surprised that it didn't go for more at the auction, actually. It did go for more, but they wanted even more than that. And then when they asked me to if I was interested in viewing for it, the original buyer pulled out. Oh, so, really? So I actually paid less for it than what it made at the auction. Oh, tell me more about that, then. They contacted me afterwards and said that it made 172000 Yes. And that the seller wanted 175000 Right. But I hadn't viewed it. So they let me view it the next day, and then they told me all of the fees that go on top, mm. which was about £7,000. Wow. So I then said, 
I'll offer 164. Really? And they accepted it. Uh, wow! So it actually worked in your favour that it didn't sell? Yeah, very, very much so, yes. Yeah. Yes, very, very much so. What do you think it's going to cost you to do it up? No more than 30. 30? Yes. That's a big budget. 10,000 for the kitchen with granite worktops. Oh, OK, we're going high end. I'm doing it once, so I don't have to touch it again for 15, 20 years. OK. Other than decoration. So it's having a new kitchen, oven, microwave, uh, fridge freezer, dishwasher, washing machine, tumble dryer built in. Granite worktops, splashbacks, new carpets, new decoration, new heaters, modern storage heaters that help with the EPC rating. Oh, do they? Yep. They're much more efficient in the way they heat up and the way they put the heat out. Oh. So they help with the EPC rating. Which is the energy is, performance standard, yep, yeah. which is what they're looking to change in 2028, where f everything's got to make a C. Right, if you're renting it out. Yes, yes. So whilst I'm doing the flat now, I'm going to change the heaters so that... I don't have to do anything later. Okay. I hope. It's a good idea. New bathroom, new floor to ceiling tiling, towel rail, underfloor heating. So it will be a brand new flat inside. Ooh, wow. Ceilings being plastered. Right. And and you think it warrants that you'll get that back on what you can I, rent I think it out for. You get the tenant that you deserve. Right. And if you spend a couple of thousand more, yeah. you may only get twenty five pounds a month more rent, but you'll get a better tenant. Got it. And I've got tenants that I've had for 17 years, 13 years. Right. So Hassle-free. Hassle-free. Good advice. So if I do it once, I haven't got to touch it, other than a redecoration every few years and carpets every eight years or something. Right. And also, if it's done to a high standard and renting all of a sudden doesn't suit me, I haven't got to do too much to offload them at right. the right price. Right. So I like my properties to be ready to sell. Right. Although I never do sell them. Right, but, OK, but you, yeah, you, again, yeah, you're yeah. sort of preparing. Yeah. Um, what about the time scale for this, then? About two months. Two months? Yeah. And how much of it do you do? I only project manage it. OK. So I, I use the, the tradesmen that I've got, Yeah. and I come and tell them what I want, but I don't do it myself. Right. And what's the plan for you, then, moving forward? Are you going to get more? Or is this the, uh... Yes, I hope to. Yeah? Yes. This is your pension, is it? Uh, I hope it to be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for that, yeah. And is this your full-time job, or...? I, I look after properties for other people, okay. and I also do some refurbishment work, so okay. this, is, this is my pension, but I enjoy it, so it becomes more and more of my job. Right, OK, well, that's great. Well, listen, congratulations, good luck with it, and we look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Well, some good advice there from Simon. He certainly seems to know what he's doing. £30,000. A good budget. It will be sparkling when it's done. So, will there be bishops wading across the river Stort when we return? <laughs> Unlikely. But you get to see how the flat turns out later in the show. Well, time has been tick, tick, ticking. Have our remaining two buyers been working on their properties? Yeah, I wonder. And have their plans come together? Or have they suffered one setback after another? It's time to find out. Time to head back to Cheltenham, where I saw a three-bedroom terrace with a guide price of 160000 And to my delight, there were ground-floor walls that were begging to be knocked through your mind starts to race in terms of what you might be able to do with it. The potential layout changes continued upstairs, where the two front bedrooms lacked independent access. To get to the third bedroom, you have to come into the second bedroom, and then it's just basically got this dividing wall. Ready to tackle these issues with a successful bid of 184000 were husband and wife property developers Kirsty and Shane. They had plans to use the property as a supported living space. So we, prov we provide supported accommodation to young people leaving care. Oh, so wow. um, we wanted a really nice house here, something that we can make up and make beautiful for them. They had a budget of 18 to 23,000 and a timescale of three months to complete the work. Now we're back two and a half years later to see how they got on.
As there was two different sitting rooms downstairs, what we thought we would do is make that into one. So we put a seal in, made sure that um, we levelled out the floors and thought that by doing that, then we would be able to achieve a nicer, longer space for people coming in. And then when we uncovered all of the main fireplaces, we thought, excellent. We kind of just then made the fireplaces really stand out. Original stone features can also be found in the entrance hallway, which now boasts a feature wall. Down the hall, we're treated to a brand new kitchen. So the kitchen was awful, as you've seen. But so we wanted to extend that, put the roof lantern in and make it a nice place that gathered lots of light, make sure that people enjoyed being in that part of the house. Although they didn't increase the footprint of the house, this is a brilliant example of how you can transform existing floor space by reconfiguring the layout. The added roof lantern is a fantastic addition to the new kitchen diner, flooding the space with light. Upstairs, the new bathroom suite ties into the kitchen aesthetic with matching laminate flooring and crisp white tiling. Upstairs in the bedrooms, as you would have seen, all of the floors were kind of disjointed, some higher than the others, and that's not very appealing for people. So what we thought is we'd level all of that out. That took a bit, of, quite a bit of work as well. Elevated the ceilings so that they're a little bit higher as well to give us the ability to do that, and then replace the walls so that you could go into the room using two separate doors, then go in through a room. All three bedrooms are made complete with the addition of inbuilt storage, along with neutral carpets and a fresh lick of paint. To the back, the garden has been tidied to make a more inviting outdoor space, while the fresh render makes the building look as good as new. On top of this, the house also has a brand new roof. A lot has changed here, so who did all the work? Shane. <laughs> Shane did most of it. Then we had separate people, so specialists come in and do the electrics. Um, also, we did find an, a lead pipe internally, so we had to call the water board and have that removed. And then, again, like I say, most of the work was done by Shane. Shane and his team have done a fantastic job transforming this property into an inviting home. But were there any major hurdles along the way? Yeah, so when we started pulling the house apart, when I said that we had stone walls, it was really difficult. So as soon as you started building them up, they were falling back down again. Um, so they had to be basically taken right down to floor level and then fixed properly. And then because it is internal walls and it's holding parts of the house up, we had acro props everywhere in the house, so um, and that was just to make sure that we made it secure for people that were working in here as well. With a myriad of issues throughout the renovation, once work began, it wasn't long before their original budget of £23,000 went out the window. So where did they end up? I thought it would be around 30 to 50k mark, and it probably ended up being around 80k. A spend that came in nearly three and a half times their original budget just goes to show that even experienced property developers like Kirsty and Shane can be caught off guard by unforeseen issues. They had an original timescale of three months, but as they were juggling other projects, the renovation took almost a year. Initially, Kirsty and Shane stuck with their plan, and for a period last year, the new and improved home was used as supported accommodation. But now, 18 months since they finished the work, there has been a change of plan. So originally we took this house on to house young people, um, but what we did is a little bit of homework on the area and we felt that this probably wasn't the right place for young people. Um, we really try and concentrate in an area with schools and everything else and maybe that was a little bit more homework we should have done from the beginning. Um, so now we're going to set it and move on to our next project. Now that Kirsty and Shane plan to sell, I'm sure they'll be interested to hear an estate agent's valuations. We've asked back the agent from our first visit for her thoughts on the renovation. 
I think the changes they've made to the property uh, are very good. I think the layout works very well in this open plan uh, sitting dining area. I love the fact that they've opened the kitchen out to create that extra space leading onto the garden. Upstairs, I think they've done a good job with regards to creating that landing area so you do have full access to the three bedrooms off a landing. Kirsty and Shane have spent a total of 264000 including the purchase price. So what sort of returns could they see on their investment? I'd be anticipating on the sales market to be advertising somewhere in the region of £315,000 to £325,000, with a view of considering offers in the region of the early £300,000. I think that's really reasonable, yeah. So I'm happy with that, actually, really happy. The agent's top figure would see Kirsty and Shane walk away with a healthy pre-tax profit of 61000 Even though the property isn't being used as they had originally intended, it has still been a successful venture for the property-developing duo. So what does the future hold for Kirsty and Shane? So the future is Shane is always on the move, always on the Skype for something else. Um, we have built a four bed property and looking to extend on the other house that's next door to that. And it definitely hasn't put us off auction properties. Hopefully we're finding the next one soon. It's time to head back to Hertfordshire and the town of Bishop's Stortford, where I saw this first floor two bedroom flat guided at 160,000. Flat itself, first thing it hits you is <laughs> the, the colour. It's all this kind of beigey kind of magnolia. Everything is wow, carpet, the walls, the doors, yeah, wow. Um, it's like you walked into the middle of a cake. The flat was spacious with the lovely addition of a balcony overlooking a stunning communal garden and a gated courtyard for residential parking. It was landlord Simon who snapped up the flat for 164,000 in a post auction deal. It needs completely gutting right everything and then starting afresh so it needs to look like a brand new flat now when it's finished. Simon had a large budget of £30,000 with plans to renovate the flat to a high standard, ready for the rental market within two months. Now we've returned three months later to see the transformation. So we completely emptied it and then we have totally refurbished everything. We've done additional electric works. We fitted the new state-of-the-art Economy 7 heaters that help with EPC ratings and they're very, very efficient. Economy 7 heaters are a type of electric heater that store heat generated when electricity is cheaper. The stored heat is then released into the room gradually. These can not only save you money, but they're far more energy efficient than a gas-fired central heating system. We fitted a new kitchen with washer-dryer, dishwasher, oven hob extractor, fridge-freezer, integrated bin, under-unit lights. We've put granite worktops in the kitchen to give it that high-end feel. As promised, Simon has gone for a top-end finish. He's clearly stuck to his mantra of doing the work once and doing it right. We fit an outside light on the terrace so that people can sit outside in the evening, drink red wine, look at the river. The bedrooms have had a similar glow up to the rest of the flat with new high quality grey carpets and paint job to match. All the window frames throughout the flat have been painted white on the inside and new roller blinds have been fitted. In the bathroom we have changed the bath around so you can lay in the bath and look out the window. We've got a shower, toilet, basin, vanity unit, and rather nice bathroom cabinet. I finished this flat to high standard because I knew the type of tenant that I wanted. I wanted to do it so that I don't have to come back to it and be repairing things next month, next year, in 10 years' time. It certainly looks the bee's knees, but has it been plain sailing to get it to this point? 
We had a, a little teething problem with the storage heaters because they need a power feed and an Economy 7 feed, and only two of the storage heaters in the flat were powered to take the power feed as well, so we had to stick an extra supply in for them two heaters. Other than that, there wasn't really any problems. Who was responsible for carrying out the work here? The work's been done by a carpenter, the same decorator that I've used for 15 years, electrician that I've used for 15 years, tiler that I've used for years. I use the same crew over and over and over again. And, and the role that I play is that I tell them what I want and then I come and check that what I want is happening. And they know me because they've worked for me for years anyway, so they, they pretty much know. <laughs> Simon's timescale slipped a smidge, but did his budget of £30,000 cover the standard of finish here? About just short of 33, we spent about £1,400 extra doing the windows on the inside. We spent about £800 extra on the tiles in the bathroom, and we spent about £800 extra on the kitchen because we went for the handleless doors rather than doors with a handle. Other than that, there's a few little incidentals that don't spring to mind. A £33,000 spend on top of the purchase price of £164,000 and auction fees in the region of £7,000 takes Simon's total investment here to £204,000. So, now the work is complete, does he still plan to add the flat to his rental portfolio? My plans for this property is that the tenant moves in on Saturday and then I'm going to be looking for the next one. That's great news that Simon already has a tenant in place. But before he moves on to the next project, let's see what the estate agent who viewed it on our first visit makes of the changes and what values he'd place on this newly renovated flat. Standard of finish is very good. Um, there's a certain limit that you could spend on a property before you take it outside its comfort zone. The kitchen is one of the main features of the property and I certainly think with the, the worktop and the integrated appliances it's been done to a very good level. Lovely new bathroom being put in and the colour scheme's all very neutral. It's now homely, it feels warm and it's been done very, very nicely. Simon is all set for this flat to become a rental vehicle but has splashing the cash on a high-end finish been worth it? What could his £204,000 investment now be worth on the sales market? If we were going to place this property on the market today, I would have set a guy a price of £280,000, to which I'd expect to achieve an offer close to that figure. If I was selling this, I would be sticking it out for 295 and I would be telling the agent that I can afford to wait, because I think someone will pay for a flat of this quality. The agent's figure could see Simon with the potential pre-tax profit of 76000 But rental has always been the name of the game, so will the agent's rental figure match what Simon is set to achieve? If we were going to take this property onto the rental market, we'd be asking between £1,400 per calendar month and £1,500 per calendar month. Well, I've actually let the property at 15.50, and the tenant moves in on Saturday. Simon will be bringing in an annual pre-tax income of over £18,000, which equates to a yield of 9%, a great addition to his growing rental portfolio. Now this project has reached its conclusion, is Simon pleased with how it's gone? I'm chuffed to bits with the finished property. The fact that I got £15.50 for it, I think, stands up to the quality of it, and I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've helped yourself pick the tips and the hints and all the tricks from today's show. Yes, yeah, so is your property notebook now full of new knowledge? <laughs> well, we'll be back with more information for you next time here on Homes Under the Hammer. Goodbye. Goodbye.